Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Brian. I'm going to be your instructor for this course, Creating Your Personal Website at GitHub Pages. And as we go through this course, you will learn how to do the things you need to do in order to quickly and easily get your page hosted at GitHub Pages for free. I'm looking forward to working with you. We'll see you in the next video. Hello and welcome to our next video. In this lesson, we're just going to get an account at GitHub. So I'm at GitHub. I'm just going to go ahead and sign up. And my username has to be unique, something unique to me. So, and then of course my email address, I need to add this in. And I need a password. And then I need to verify that I'm a human. And I can create my account. And I'm at GitHub. And then I just tell it what I am. You know, I'm a trainer, a teacher. Um, I do my own thing, whatever it is, you know. How much programming experience do I have? How am I going to use this? Complete my setup. Got my GitHub. Got to go out to my email and validate my email account. So I verify my email address. My email is verified. I'm going to hit F5 here. See, now I have the ability to create repositories, work with other re repositories, do whatever I need to do. And so I am good to go. And that's all it takes to get an account at GitHub. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Hello and welcome to our next video. In this lesson, we're going to get Visual Studio Code that we can use to do a lot of different editing, whether that's HTML, CSS, anything with Azure you want to do in C Sharp, you can actually do it through Visual Studio Code now, and also Java, which is really interesting. So you can do Python as well, or uh, you can even do all of your Git stuff. And the really nice thing about Visual Studio Code is it also has a terminal, which you can use to run PowerShell or other commands such as Git commands. And so you may see me doing some of that throughout some of the courses that I teach. But basically, I'm at code.visualstudio.com, and you can go there, and it doesn't matter what machine you have. If it's Windows, great. If it's Mac, great. If it's Linux, great. You can get the version. It will automatically detect what you're on, generally, and give you the right download. So I'm just going to go ahead and download this. And you see here, I can actually choose Windows, Mac, or Debian. Um, user installer, system installer. So this is where it's a little bit tricky because this weird user installer thing, if I do that, sometimes it goes wonky. If I use the system installer, sometimes it goes wonky. So I, I'm going to go ahead and do the system installer 64-bit and try to put it on the machine for everybody. And hopefully that will work the way that I'm expecting it to. And I won't get any issues later with this isn't installed correctly or whatever happens when it doesn't work. If you start getting those, just come back to Visual Studio Code. Just wipe it out come back and, and do the other version, whether it's user or system, whatever it might be. Either way, you should be good to go. It really doesn't matter. So I'm just doing the system because I'm hoping that I can install it for the entire machine for any user. I'm going to go ahead and accept the EULA. Of course, you want to read through this word for word, make sure that you're not getting yourself into something you don't agree with, and, and make sure you're you know following the rules. And I'm just going to put it in the default location here, which is C Program Files Microsoft VS Code and Visual Studio Code in my Start Menu folder. 
And then here's where it's important. I want to go ahead. I don't, I don't need a desktop icon. I'll actually pin it to my taskbar. But I want these shell commands for open with code. Uh, those are really important to me. And then I'm going to go ahead and just register code for now and add to the path. And that add to the path allows me to just type code and it will run on my machine, which is important when we get to get stuff, if you're doing get stuff. Or maybe even if you want to right click on a folder and say open in code, which I do a lot, then you want these shell commands to be there. And uh, this code here, again, putting it in the path, making it so that I can just type code in a command line and it should, should load up the editor. So if you miss some of those, just come back and reinstall it. It's simple, or you could you know, manually add them to your path or whatever you need to do, but you know, it's, it's really not that hard to reinstall. It's a pretty lightweight program, and it, when it comes down to it, you can get different extensions and use those on your different, whatever you're trying to do, whether it's an Azure function you wanna write, or if it's a Java program or whatever it might be, and you see it's already installed. So this was a super quick, so I generally like to work in dark mode. I understand a lot of people don't like dark mode for demos. So real quick, I can just go ahead to file preferences and change my colors here. And I'm just gonna put this into my default light mode. I like that as well. Uh, it works fairly nicely. And it's a super awesome little program. Like I said, I can do a lot of things with this. And so that's really all I needed to do in order to get Visual Studio Code installed. Now, unfortunately, I don't have Git on this machine yet, and it tells me a valid Git installation was not installed, so I can't do Git. And I'm not going to go ahead and do any extensions, but you can see if you wanted to, for example, get C Sharp, you could go ahead and get that. If you wanted to get uh, Java, you could go ahead and get that as well. Uh, you, can get, you can basically get all of these different extensions put on your machine uh, right through Visual Studio Code to run things as you go. Now, for the different videos that I'll do for different courses. I'll probably come back and cover those again, so don't worry about it right now. We'll come back to this once we have Git installed and we're ready to try to do something with Java or something with C Sharp or something with Azure. All right, thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Hello and welcome to our next video. In this lesson, we're going to get Git on our machine. Now, every developer at this point should be using Git. So if you're not, get Git on your machine and start using it. You'll want it for GitHub, for different collaboration with other developers. In fact, if you're not even a developer, Git can help you. If you're doing other things, you can actually put your stuff in a Git repository and have all the power of a source control management solution on any files. Because in, in the long run, it's just binary large objects, blobs. It's just zeros and ones. So anyway, I'm gonna get off my soapbox for a minute about Git, but we're gonna go ahead and get Git on our machine. So here I've gone to git-scm.com slash downloads. If you just type git download in the actual, you know, Google search or whatever, you can find it very easily. So I'm just gonna download the latest version for Windows because I'm on Windows, but you can see other versions for Mac or Linux are just as readily available. Now just note, if you're on Linux or Mac, you may already have get on your machine. So just be careful or just double check to see if you need to do it this way or you know, do a quick search on how to get Git for your Mac or for your Linux box um, to make sure you're updated to the latest version. For sure Linux should have it on there. All right, so I'm just gonna do 64-bit Git for Windows because I want a 64-bit machine. And if you wanted to do you know, different editions, you can do that. Actually, mine already started because it detected that, so we're good to go. So it says you're downloading the latest 64-bit. Uh, it was released 10 days ago on that date, and we're good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this installation. So since this is the first installation, I have to run through a bunch of questions about what I wanna do. And you'll probably wanna double check if you're trying to work with a team that you make sure you do the right choices for these, but I mean, you're, you probably won't be that far off from what I'm doing. All right, so here's the general public license for Git. For this, I'm going to go ahead and, of course, read every word of this EULA and make sure that I agree with all of it before I hit next. And now it's on my machine here at C Program Files Git. 
And I'm not going to put it on the desktop, but I definitely for sure want Git Bash here. I don't really ever use Git GUI anymore, so I'm actually going to uncheck that now. If you want Git GUI, it's just another tool that you can use to do Git within the uh, a, a graphical user interface, a GUI, that allows you to do Git. But I do all of my Git through the command line or through Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code at this point. So I don't ever use that. And in fact, um, most people don't use it anymore. If you really want a different GUI, there are quite a few other options available as well. Now, there's nothing wrong with Git GUI. In fact, I did an entire course using that at one point. Git Kraken is a really nice GUI that you could download. Tortoise Git, if you like Tortoise tools, if you're on that side of the fence. GitHub Desktop is a really nice one. And SourceForge, I think, from, or Source Tree, I can't remember, from Bitbucket, uh, Atlassian, they have one as well. Source Tree, I think, maybe. Anyway, they're all really great tools. They all do the same thing. It's just really what you like. And don't let anybody tell you what you like. Do what you want to do. This is your world. And, and live in it, you know? All right, we want git LFS. We want to associate .git files. We want to associate .shell files to run with bash. So on Windows, we don't have a bash terminal. By default, PowerShell, we kind of do, but I'm going to use bash, and I can always do stuff in, in PowerShell later if I want to. This isn't locking me in. It's just saying most of my shell files I'm going to write, I'm going to do in bash. I'm not going to use a true type font. You can use that if you want. I am actually going to check daily for git Windows uh, updates, which is annoying, but I definitely want to get the latest version as they come out. So Git will be my shortcut menu item. And then, okay, so here's the thing. I have Visual Studio Code as my default editor. I want to do that. Now, you probably want to do that as well, unless you really like Vim. Vim is a, it's an interesting thing, and people get stuck in it all the time. Now, I'm going to leave it on Vim for my installation because I actually have videos coming that I'm going to create where I'm going to manually set the Git editor to be Visual Studio Code. If you're not going to worry about that and you just want to use Visual Studio Code as your editor, you should be able to just select this now. And that should give you the automatic config setting that lets code run as your editor, which I would recommend doing. Or Nano, if you're on that side of the fence as well. Notepad++, whatever you want to use. Atom, Sublime Text, anything else but Vim. Okay, so I'm going to put it on Vim. I'm going to say, do as I say, not as I do. Don't use Vim unless you really know Vim. I'm leaving it here because a lot of people get stuck in Vim, and I want to demonstrate that in another video on how to get out of it. So there's this whole thing going on with the branching right now, and so currently the, the master branch is the, the old way of doing things, and now everybody is using main. So I'm going to go ahead and go with the new way to do this. Um, main, I think, actually has legacy back to other source code tools as well. Uh, it's just really a better name for a trunk branch anyway, main. It avoids any implications of other things that we don't want to deal with anymore. We want, we want, to, we want to be better than that. So we're going we're gonna to leave it at main, and we're going to go with that. Uh, can I use git from git and bash only, or do I want to do the command line? This is the recommend. I'm going to leave it. Do not do this one. Um, on the Windows machines, unless you really know what you're doing, this will this might wreck some other things. So just do the recommended, or just get and get bash only if you're really scared. But just do the command line. Using the open SSL that works fine. You could try the Windows Secure Channel Library as well. But if you're going to generate server certificates, you're probably going to want open SSL anyway. So I would leave this. Uh, this is the weirdest thing. Uh, check out as is commit as is, so you don't get a bunch of line ending warnings because if you're if you're on if you're only if you're the only developer if you're all on windows this really won't matter but if you have developers working in a bot on a linux box and you're working on a windows box and you're constantly committing your in line endings differently um you could have problems so you need to figure out what your team is doing uh, maybe you want to always you know check out as windows style but commit as unix style so that everybody has kind of this default Unix style line endings. And then when you, they pull it down, they don't get errors. When you pull it down, it'll just overwrite them. It's just really annoying. Um, I'm, I'm on by myself right now. So I'm just gonna do as is, as is, so I don't see a lot of those warnings, hopefully. I'm using menttty. I'm going to leave this as default. Now you can, you can mess around with this if you want to, but when I'm doing git, git pull, I wanna do default. If I'm gonna do a fast forward, 
Or if I'm going to do a rebase, I'm going to do that when I want to, not when the editor tells me to. Uh, the Git Credential Manager Core, I'm going to use that. That's the new way to do it. This allows me to run my Windows credentials against Git and basically log into my uh, Git, Git account at GitHub and it will automatically authenticate me, which is really nice. The older way, uh, you had to have the uh, Git Credential Manager on your machine. Uh, it does require an older .NET framework if you don't have that, so I would just recommend sticking with Git Credential Manager Core now and just leave that alone. Just leave it the way it is. File system caching. If you're on a Windows machine, you probably don't even know what a symbolic link is. It's more of a link thing, or a Linux thing, excuse me. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to enable this. I'm not going to need it per se for anything that I know of on my windows box. If you're on a bash uh, terminal all the time or a terminal in Linux and you know what a symbolic link is and you want to have those available by all means use them. And I don't want pseudo consoles. I'm just going to leave this alone for now. If you want to do that, go for it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just launch this out and make sure I have it. So if you're not familiar with how these work, you're going to want to do a git config dash dash global dash e. Now, hopefully, if you have code on your machine and you set up code, it will pull up code. If you have them, you're going to see this. And this is where people get stuck. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and tell you to get out of this. You need to uh, adapt and uncomment the following, following lines. But to do that, I need to hit I to get the insert button out there. So I want this out, this out, and my name is going to be Brian. And uh, yeah, I'm in Vim, so I have to manually do a lot of things here to get to that right spot, uh, if it'll even let me. So we'll just say my name is Brian, and my email is what I want my email to be when I'm going to be logging into whatever or whatever I want to do. Now I may change that uh, escape colon wq to write and quit and that will do that and then you know it's still going to be there escape colon q will just quit without writing so you can see that all right actually you know what this is a simple command and everybody's going to want this if you haven't already done it you're going to want this so what you want to do to get edit your editor to be code first of all you need to make sure code works so you just run that uh, and if you pull up Visual Studio Code, when that happens, you're good to go. That means you installed code and it's in your path. So you're good to go. So now I know that code is going to work. So I'm just going to do git config dash dash global core dot editor code, which is that same command I just ran. And then I just want to run with a, a wait flag. So let's try code dash dash w. And now let's do git config. I just push the up arrow here to global editor and there it is and you see it is waiting for me which is good that w is working it didn't just quit so let me show you what that looks like real quick if i take that out of there exit this and this time i do that you'll see now we're back at the command line before i was done with my code stuff so i definitely want that dash w on there so that this command line will pause while I'm doing stuff inside of code. If I'm doing commit messages and such, that'll be important. But you see, that's how easy it is to make my new get editor point back to Visual Studio Code. All right, so we have Git, we have Visual Studio Code lined up as our editor. We're good to go. That's going to wrap up this video. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.
All right, and thanks for joining this video. One of the first things that I wanna do before I get started with the actual development of my site is I wanna choose a theme. And I found three bootstrap themes that have MIT license at startbootstrap.com, which I thought, hey, that's pretty nice. And an MIT license means that I can use it for whatever I want without having to worry about violating license terms. So I was looking around, they actually have quite a few to choose from that are free, which is nice. And I decided to go with the agency theme. The freelancer theme is pretty nice as well. And the admin theme is awesome if you're building an admin site. But here's the agency theme. And if you just kind of go to the preview, the reason I like this one is because it has basically the same kind of stuff I had currently, but also it's just a one pager. And I was really just looking for a one pager. It's all gonna be static anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and download the agency theme and get a copy of that so that I can start working with that in my code. All right, now that we have the theme downloaded, we're ready to start doing some setup. We'll see you in the next video. All right, welcome to this video. And in this lesson, we're gonna get our repository set up at GitHub so that we can create our website. And just for the purposes of this demo here, I'm gonna just do a very simple website demo. This is not gonna be the final version that I'm doing for my actual website. But this is to help you learn how to use GitHub pages to host your own site. Now with that, this is not gonna be a deep dive into GitHub. This is not gonna be a deep dive into Git. And this isn't even gonna be a deep dive into HTML or JavaScript or anything like that. So if you need more information on those, there are plenty of other courses. And might I humbly suggest you look into my Ultimate Git 5-Day Challenge, which is also free, and my HTML, which is also free. Now, those are out there and available for you, but obviously there are other choices. You don't have to use those. And so I just wanted to put that all out there. You can hopefully figure out how to do what you need to do and go from there. So I'm at GitHub, and I'm gonna go ahead and create a re new repository. And I'm just gonna call this something that's gonna be useful. How about we just call it my agency site? And we'll go ahead and just say, this is my main website. It doesn't have to be anything like this for yours. You don't have to match this exactly. Just follow along and do what you need to do to learn what you need. I'm gonna go ahead and add a readme, a git ignore, which I'm just gonna do for node. Probably don't even really need the git ignore, but whatever. And I'm gonna do an MIT license. It's only fair. I mean, the site template I'm using is an MIT license. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep that license. And when you're in open source world, that's kind of what you do. You use the MIT license and everybody else can use it and do it and make it better as well too. So I'm gonna go ahead and create this repository. And that gives me the ability to quickly work with my code. So I have Boba Fett, my agency. And what I wanna do is set up my local site to work. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that cloned. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on this code button here. I'm gonna click on this clipboard to get my GitHub repository URL for this site. And then I'm gonna take that to my local desktop. I have a local folder here, C demo arena, and I'm gonna go ahead and get bash here. So I've also already gotten the Git tools to get things set up on my machine. And so here I'm gonna go ahead and say git clone. And we're gonna go ahead and paste this here into my agency site. Now, because this is a public repository, it doesn't matter who I'm logged in right now, I can actually clone a public repository locally. But I'm actually going to be pushing to this in a moment, and I'm not set up correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and change my settings behind the scenes for who I'm connecting as. I'm not gonna show you that. Hopefully you know how to get set up with Git as well to get connected to a repository. And so actually, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video right now. We're gonna keep it short and sweet. So what we've done so far is we've created a repository at GitHub and we pulled that repository down so that we have that locally on our machine to work with going forward. 
Thanks very much. We'll see you in the next video. Welcome to our next video. In this lesson, we're gonna quickly get our agency site code and push it up to our repository so that we're ready to set it up as GitHub pages. So here I have the site that I cloned earlier from GitHub and I gotten the Git repository as well as the readme license and gitignore file that are out there currently. And right now it's sitting on master, uh, excuse me, it's sitting on main. So if I actually just did a quick look here and we go into my agency site, you can see it's sitting on the main branch, ready to go. And technically we should use a branching strategy, but I'm the only developer and I'm just gonna save a little time and just go directly to main. And I'm once again, I'm gonna say, do as I say, not as I do. Uh, do not push directly to main ever. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and do that many times, but let's go ahead and get our code here. So I've downloaded again the agency site from Start Bootstrap, and I'm just gonna extract it here. And I wanna extract it directly into this folder. I don't wanna have it in any other nested folder at all. And so basically at this point, I have HTML for my agency index.html. If I actually open this in a browser right now, it should be set up ready to go as it was from when I downloaded it. So you see that it's actually there. This is running locally now. And all the stuff that they had put on their website is available to me. So I've already got this page set up and ready to go. Now I just need to get it out to GitHub and host it. By adding the files into the repo, we've made a change. So we need to run a git status to see what files have been changed. And here you see the assets folder, CSS folder, index.html, and JS folder have all been changed. So after we see that, we're gonna wanna go ahead and do a git add dot to go ahead and add those to the index to be staged for commit. And then ultimately we'll want to commit them so that they'll be committed into our local repository to be able to be pushed to GitHub. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get push, and this is where it's gonna be upset with me because I don't have rights, and so I'm going to need to prove that I am who I say I am. And GitHub has done this really awesome, nice thing now where you can actually just sign in with your browser. As long as you're logged in, you can click a button and literally get signed in on local windows here, and I do have to give this authorization on my account. So bear with me one second since this is the first time I've done it on this account. All right, and I'm about to sign in, completing the sign in process. And that gives me the ability to say, yes, I want to allow the Get Credential Manager to work. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And authentication succeeded. So now I'm officially logged in locally on my Windows box and I can close this tab. And you see that my Get Push worked. And if I hit F5 out here, you can see now that I've pushed my code. So index.html is out there, the gitignore, the assets, the CSS, and the JS are all there. So this is where I'm gonna stop this video again. I'm gonna to try to keep these videos short and sweet, and we will come back in the next video and start setting up our GitHub pages. Thanks very much, we'll see you next time.
right, thank you for joining me again for this video. And in this video, we're gonna continue with our site here. We've pushed the files now into our repository. And so the last thing we need to do to get this out there is actually just start making this a GitHub pages. And so to do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and go to the settings on the repository. And I'm gonna look around here for a minute to see the different things that are available. I have wikis, issues, sponsorships, projects, discussions, merge buttons, archives, and then GitHub pages. So right now my source is currently disabled. Select a source below to enable GitHub pages on this repository. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the main branch. Now, if you didn't wanna do the main branch, you could do one of the other branches as well, just in case you wanted to keep your main branch protected or you wanted to create a separate branch specifically for the GitHub pages. So you can see you can also do the root folder or you can do a slash docs folder. So I'm just gonna do the root here because I put everything on the root. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. So here you just wanna hit F5 to refresh or just browse away from the repository and come back. My site is ready to be published at this site here. So what if I go ahead and click on this now? 404, there isn't a page here. Okay, well we probably just need to be a little more patient and give it time to actually publish. And so while we're waiting for it to publish, what I wanna show you is that you could have also just chosen a theme here from GitHub. And if you choose a theme, you can use one of the built-in themes that they have, and it will publish to your website with that theme without you doing anything. So as an alternative to the Start Bootstrap or another theme site that you could go get some themes from, if you just want a default generic theme that you can get started with, just come out here and create a GitHub repo and then do the theme, and then go ahead and choose one that you like. I'm just gonna stick with my site that I currently have, and also enforcing HTTPS. So you see what the nice thing is here? We get HTTPS for free. Isn't that awesome? Another thing to note here is that with the custom domain, we'll be able to point any of our custom domains that we've purchased at this site, and thereby direct traffic to a nice friendly URL that we want our customers to see. All right, now the nice thing is, is that I did save this from the root here, and so hopefully it will actually just publish itself because of the fact that it's gonna be a GitHub Pages and I didn't do anything fancy with it. So I just need to wait a little bit and be a little bit patient in order to see if this is going to work. And again, once I have that link, what I can do is go ahead and just go down to my page here and you see now it is published now. So let's go ahead and just open this in a new link and still saying site not found. So I'm just gonna go ahead and directly type the URL to reach the page directly and see if that will pull up the page. And it does. So I just needed to actually hit the index.html as my start page, but you see now I have a public facing website that is HTTPS and it is published with the code that I have ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and end this video. Thank you very much, we'll see you next time. Hello and welcome to our next video. In this lesson, we're gonna get our site set up with a custom domain so that it works, so that you don't have to go to bobafett.githubpages.io to see the site. You can actually just go to my custom domain and you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing on your site eventually. So here I have my settings and I'm gonna go back down to where I had created my website. And now I wanted to show you, I was a little impatient. It's already published now. If I go ahead and hit this, I don't have to do anything special, it's there. So bobafett.github.io is my page that I'm actually running there. And then it's in the repository. But when we create the custom domain, we're gonna ignore the repository name. And so what I wanna do is go ahead and get my custom domain name listed here, which is just gonna be GitHub Pages demo.com and I'm gonna go ahead and save that. 
Now that's going to try to repropagate and make things happen. It's also going to create a CNAME record in my repository for me, which is basically just getuppagesdemo.com. Not anything fancy there, but we want to make sure that we do this piece first. Now when I go back to my settings, what it'll show me is that it's not quite working, and that's expected. I see here that it says, hey, your domain doesn't resolve. And so you, you, know, you can go here and check out how to make this work, and you can ultimately go to here and it starts walking you through. So we did step one, two, and three already, and now we're on step four. We need to go out to our DNS provider. So that's not GitHub, that's not anything I'm doing, that's where I bought the domain. And then I go there and I say, I want to point a CNAME record at this domain, this domain being bobafett.github.io. And once I do that, then I can go ahead and get that to propagate out. Now it may take up to 24 hours for this site to start working, or it may start working much more quickly than that. So we have our domain ready to go, and now let's go quickly do that out at our provider. And so here what we see is I'm gonna go ahead and quickly add a CNAME. And I'm going to say CNAME is going to be host dub 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 points to boba or dash fet dot github dot io. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. Uh, there was an error processing. Please try again. And I see now why it might be failing. So let's take a look at this. So I already have a CNAME up here that's dub dub dub. So let's just edit this one. And instead of pointing to at, which is the local, let's point to boba dash fet github.io and we'll save that all right so that's going to work now i happen to also know that in order for this to work with https i want to add a couple of other settings some a records and so rather than parking it here which is what it's doing currently let's go ahead and change this host and these are just some github pages hosts that i want to point this at and so I'm going to go ahead, instead of pointing to parked here, I'm going to go ahead and say 185.199.108.153. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then I want to add three more type A rows into this setting. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, type A rows. So we want an A, and the host is going to be 185.199.110.153. Excuse me, that's what I'm pointing to. This is, uh, the host is just gonna be at for all of these. And I need a, a third and a fourth A record. So we'll do another A at, it points to 185.199.111.153. And finally, one more A record, which is also an at host, and it points to 195.199.109.153. All right, so I've configured now to set up my C name record to point to bobafet.github.io, and I've added four A records, basically took over one of them and added three more. So it's no longer gonna be parked, and now it should be pointing directly to my GitHub pages. Everything should translate like I want it to. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video because I'm going to give this about a half an hour or so to sit and hopefully get propagated out there. And then at that point, hopefully be able to show you the end. Thanks very much. We'll see you next time. All right, so I'm not very patient, and I've only waited about five minutes, but I just want you to know that it is working the last time I checked it here. So my agency site hasn't changed at all. I was able to create the CNAME and go do the custom domain. And now if I go back into my settings here, what I should see 
is that we're ready to go here. And look, my site is published at GitHubPagesDemo.com. So if I open this in a new tab, there it is. So I have literally worked on this for about an hour at this point. I went and got a template, I downloaded it, I put it into a repository. I was then able to push my template in that repository, took the repository, set up GitHub pages, went out to GoDaddy and bought a domain, and then pointed that domain's C name and A records at the GitHub pages demo, and I'm here. And we're already up and running. All right, so the last thing I wanna do is enforce HTTPS. Now I can't do this yet, but look at this, what it says. Not yet available because the certificate has not finished being issued. It will take up to 24 hours for this process to complete. Uh, it provides that extra layer of security. So I didn't purchase an HTTPS certificate, an SSL. I didn't do that. That is not on me at this point, which is awesome. I don't have to pay for that. I don't have to manage it. Uh, what I'm going to do is leave my domain up and running here, and then tomorrow sometime, this should be available. I should be able to come back here, check this box, and all of a sudden now I'll have HTTPS on my static site at GitHub, which took me about an hour to get put together, and it's hosted with a custom domain. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this video. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Hello and welcome to our next video. In this lesson, we're going to enable HTTPS on our GitHub Pages site. So everything has been propagated out. The pages were pushed into a repo. The repo was made into a GitHub Pages repo. We then set up a custom domain on it. We then bought a domain and put it into a CNAME record and the A records that we needed in order to point back to GitHub. Everything's working at GitHub Pages right now. It is on the HTTP only, not secure, which you're not gonna want on your regular site, even if you're not taking payments anymore. Pretty much every uh, browser is basically saying, hey, hey, you sure you wanna go here? It's not really safe. So you wanna have HTTPS. Well, of course, if you do that on your own sites, ordinarily it would cost a lot of money to do that, and you have to rotate your security certificates and all that jazz that you don't wanna probably spend a lot of time doing. So GitHub Pages, I can simply click this button to enforce HTTPS, and... If I go out to my pages here, not secure, not secure. Well, it hasn't propagated yet, so let's go ahead and make sure everything's saved. Once again, I just probably need to be patient and give it a minute, so let me do that. All right, so I've waited a couple minutes and, and pushed the button a few times to see what's going on here, and now you can see the HTTPS GitHub Pages demo is ready to go. If I hit that, it's good to go, and hopefully, www.githubpages.demo also. So now everything is secure. I have an HTTPS certificate on top of my pages. I was able to easily set up my domain using my CNAME and the 4A records, and my pages are published. So what remains for me to do now is basically make this site my own, and then I'll have a public-facing site hosted at GitHub that I was able to get it set up very quickly and have full security on top of it with the HTTPS security for the SSL. And that's going to end this video. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.
Hello and welcome to our next video. In this lesson, we're going to work on our site a little bit and you know, I'm going to leave most of your site work up to you and you'll probably need to do a little bit of research on working with HTML, maybe some JavaScript, CSS stuff, if you don't know that already. But what I'm gonna show you are a couple examples that you can use that I think will be pretty common and will give you some leverage to continue working with this stuff in the future. In this first one, we're going to put a YouTube video on our page. Now, before I get started with that, though, I wanted to show you, I'm working in Visual Studio Code here. You can see Visual Studio Code, and here's my index.html, which is my single page site. But over here, you see I have the preview going. And so it's pretty nice to be able to make changes here and seeing stuff happen kind of live over there on the right-hand side. Now, I've gone ahead and made quite a few changes already. I've also left some code in here and commented it out. Uh, Ordinarily, I would just delete that, but I'm leaving it in there in case you are looking at the code and you just want more examples or wanted to do stuff with that, it's still there. Uh, but you can see I've done quite a bit already with some of this stuff, making sure that you know buttons aren't going to work if if people don't uh, you know try to click on these sites or these buttons or whatever. I'm I'm not collecting contact information or anything like that. So, but yeah, you can see there's just a lot of stuff. Now this doesn't really keep up very well, uh, so there's a few things, a few little quirks with that. But you probably wonder, well, how do I get that? So if you're in Visual Studio Code, this is just an extension. And so you could go to the extensions and, and take a look here. I'm going to see if I can find it on the... I don't like that this is so small here. Let's make this a little bigger. So you see, actually, what I have installed is HTML5 Preview from Thomas... I have no idea. Hacken? Sorry, Thomas uh, and Townsend. And anyway, I've, I've installed this HTML5 Preview. This is what I'm using to see the stuff on the right-hand side of the page. So if you went out to the extensions in the marketplace, you could just search for HTML preview, and you should be able to find that. Now, obviously, there's hundreds of these, so you don't have to use that one. If you want to try something else, please feel free. Um, other people have also done things. You can see there's quite a few out there. Um, take your pick. Try one. If you don't like it, try another one, etc. So. And, and look for other possible extensions out there that you might want as well. And you see that I have quite a few installed on my machine uh, already, just from regular use. So I do a lot of Azure stuff on there as well. All right, so then to see that over here, just have my open preview to the side. Now this one, uh, you'll, you'll probably already have an open preview, but it won't work for HTML out of the box. So if you try to do that, it won't work, but it, once you have the extension, it works just fine. All right, so I have that. So now let's go ahead and do the thing we wanted to do. So in this one, I want to embed a video. Now what I've done is I've built in, so I have this video from a song that I actually wrote and sang, and I would love it if you would listen to it. That would help me out a lot, but if you don't, that's fine. Um, I've also got a link here to my Spotify, but here you see uh, I've left a space here for the video, I just don't have it in there yet. So what I need to do is embed it there. So that's in one of my modal windows, which is just a pop-up, so that's way down here at the bottom. So I'm looking for, let's just quickly find modal. All right, so here's my modals, and here's my fully live video. So I'm just gonna slide this over a little bit. You can see it's having trouble keeping up. So sometimes when it doesn't keep up, I just go ahead and close it and then reopen it. So I can kind of be in the same place. Ah, maybe it was in the right place. Anyway, I kind of want it out of the way right now anyway. So what I want to do, I want to put this, I want to put it kind of right in here, where I have it between this original music and then in partnership with Creative Soul Records. So let me just go ahead and clear a spot here. And this is how simple it is to embed a YouTube video. So let me just pull up YouTube. And on YouTube, I'm just going to go do a quick search here for me. And I'll find the video. And there's the video. And uh, yeah, so you can see there it is. Um, and let me just take a quick look here. All I want to do is grab this share. And I'm going to grab the embed code here. And that's going to give me this iframe. And you can also start it at a specific time if you want, but I'm not going to do that. So I just want to do that. I don't need to show the player controls. Let's just leave that out. 
and I don't care about privacy enhanced mode, I don't think. Um, you can see other things that, that you could do there as well, but all I really care about is this code right here, this iframe. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that, just Control C to copy it, or Command C if you're on a Mac maybe. I think there was a little copy button there too. Let's go ahead and drop that in. So there's my iframe, and so now I'm just gonna take a quick look here. I have just that index.html just modified, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get add, and I'm gonna go ahead and get commit m, and I'm just gonna say added YouTube video, and then I'm just gonna push. So that'll push that out to my GitHub Pages site, uh, so I can see it there, but if I look at my preview here now, and I find my fully live video. Yeah, it's not showing up here in the preview, so hopefully it works. And you can always also check, one nice thing about Visual Studio Code, you can just right click and say open or reveal in File Explorer. So I could just open up the page this way as well. And there it is, you can see that it's actually gonna be there just fine and people will be able to play it just fine off of YouTube, go to YouTube just like I would like for them to be able to do. So. All right, let's go ahead and check out our GitHub pages and make sure it pushed. All right, so there's my GitHub pages demo, still going just strong, and there it is. So it's already live, and once again, People could come out there now and watch my video. So, awesome. And of course, if you wanted to see it in a bigger, you could do that. You could go out to it this way, whatever. All that jazz. Anyway, hopefully that helps you because now you'll be able to embed a YouTube video on your sites very easily. If you are building courses or whatever you're doing at YouTube, you could easily just embed one of your promo videos there, or you could put you know, your sales video or whatever you're trying to do to make your brand more aware of whatever you need to do. All right, so that's what we needed to do to get a YouTube video embedded on our pages. Once again, all we did was grabbed that code off of YouTube itself and just literally copied and pasted the code for the iframe into our page here. Uh, let me find it. So we just copied and pasted that code here. And if I just make this, that way you can just see it a little bit uh, all at once. It's literally just an iframe, uh, the size you wanna make it. So I could have made it a little bigger if I would have wanted to. Um, there's the link and yeah, autoplay. All that jazz is all there. And again, if you wanted to start at a specific time, you just make sure you, you grab that when you copy the code. All right, that's gonna wrap up this video. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Hello and welcome to our next video. In this lesson, we're just going to quickly add our Calendly link to the GitHub page so that people could quickly click a button and schedule a call with you. So if, you're, if you are trying to gather information, this is one way you could do it very easily because you won't have a backing database that's easily hooked up, but you can um, look at other options for that, which we'll talk about in an advanced session here in a little bit. But with this one, this is a very easy way for me to go out and use a free service called Calendly that I can then embed my code and people can click a button and literally schedule a call with me and I get their information and have a call with them to potentially make them into a client or see if there's ways I can help them or whatever it might be. 
Now, I just want to be very clear about this. I'm putting a real Calendly link on this page, but I will not be responding to these. So if you schedule calls with me, uh, they will not be answered. I, I signed up for a fake account under Boba Fett here. And uh, so Boba Fett is, is not a real person and these calls are not real. So hopefully that's entertaining enough and not annoying. Uh, if you need to talk to me, please just use the chat systems. Um, there, you know, maybe you're in a community with me or, or some other, uh, maybe you've connected with me on LinkedIn or whatever it might be, Twitter, whatever. Hit me up at one of those places and I'll be happy to talk to you. But don't try to schedule a call with Boba Fett because Boba Fett's still in the Sarlacc pit as far as I'm concerned. All right. <laughs> Let's go ahead and, and, uh, and make this happen. So part of the reason I want to do this as well, is just to show you how easy it is to start doing other things with your site outside of just leaving the code that they gave you or that you have in your template. And so here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my Calendly link. So you see, this is my Calendly for Boba Fett and uh, Boba Fett is uh, signed up and ready to take calls. And you can see I've made a couple of things here, but the demo chat is the one that I want. And so you can see that uh, this is just a really quick place that I could add in some options if I want to. Let's go ahead and go to the view live page here. So this is where people can come in and actually schedule a call with me. So if I take this link here and then, you know, they could come out here and click on this and say they want to take 930 and then they have to add their information, schedule it. And then that gets sent off to Boba Fett and Boba Fett could then go ahead and, and call them back. All right. So it's, it's very simple to get all that set up. We just need to make sure that they can get driven to this page here and be able to work with us. So if we take this part here with just the demo chat, let's make sure that works. Yeah, and it'll automatically populate that month in there. So we don't want to have that hard coded because we don't want to be stuck in February, especially since February is almost over at the time I'm recording this, certainly over by the time you're watching it. So just to grab the first part up to the the end of the name of your chat or whatever. Don't grab that question mark query string part with the variable for the active month. That'll get populated for you. So HTTPS Calendly.com, your username, whatever the name of your chat is. So I have this place here where I've already pre-populated some code. It's going to say schedule a call. Let's chat. Use my Calendly link. I'm just going to drop it right in here uh, in between the schedule call and then this timeline stuff that they had that was built in. So let me just close this down for a second so I can get the full screen. And right here is my place that I want to put it. So I could probably put any HTML controls here that I want. I'm just going to use a paragraph control. That's usually generally a good way to get some nice default padding. If you're not real familiar with any kind of styling or, or margins or padding, uh, it's a quick way to get kind of a paragraph of spacing kind of evenly spaced. And so, now what I need is just an A href. These are known as anchor tags. And then I'm going to say equals. And then in the quotes, I'm just going to put my link. And then I'm going to say here, I want to say, you know, go ahead and say uh, schedule a call. So you see there that inside of the A href, A, the anchor tag, href is the reference link that I want to put in there. And then this is the text that's going to display on the actual page. So that link won't actually be shown. I'm going to go ahead and save that. Let's let's preview it here. See what it looks like. So you can see their schedule call. That's not real big, but it does work to do what I want it to do. So that's good. But let's let's make this a little bigger. I want to make sure people don't miss this. So let's actually do something here with some styling. So this whole entire paragraph, let's just do style and you might use CSS as well. Let's just do background color. And then let's just do yellow for the whole thing here. Kind of stick with the, the style. See, that's not, it's kind of nice and bright. You can make this uh, any HTML number. So you could, you know, use any web safe number that actually I like a lot with that black kind of the yellow uh, in there. It's a little bigger. Uh, so let's leave that actually. Um, black is actually zero, zero, zero. And so the absence of all color uh, in the web colors, zero, 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 the three, uh, characters instead of six is just a more of a web safe color. I'm not sure how much important that is anymore uh, with our more advanced machines, but it might still be important for accessibility. Um, so you might want to just go with three there or, um, or six. It doesn't matter. And let's make it a little taller. So I'm just going to say height. Let's start at 50 pixels. And I need to not use quotes here because I'm already in quotes. So let's just use a single 
tick here. And save that. Doesn't like it. Oh, yes, not equals. Height colon. And then I can take these off. 50 pixels. There we go. So that's a little taller. A little easier to see. Let's make our text a little easier to see as well. So let's just do the same thing here. Style equals. And that's not going to work because I just need to make the font bigger. So let's do font size. Let's try 24, pixel, 24 pixels. All right, so that's a little bigger. And you can see that it's not quite centered from top to bottom. So let's just do a, a padding top. Now, I know that there's better ways to do CSS. If you're a CSS expert, please feel free to ignore everything I'm doing and do it the way you would do it. Uh, but if you've never seen this before, you might like it. So uh, let's see, let's start at five. Let's go to 15. It's not actually affecting anything there. Yeah, so that's not actually doing what I want at all anyway. So you see, I, I'm making a, a few mistakes here, but. Let's just try it up here on, the, on this one. Yeah, there we go. That's where I wanted it. Okay, so you see it kind of dropped down a little bit. Five was actually too far. Let's try three. Three looks a little better. Now you can see the schedule of call is, is there. But note that only if I click over here, it doesn't actually do anything. It's only if I click on that link. So I actually want to get that. I want to make this so that I can actually make the whole thing clickable. So rather than have the, uh, the, the paragraph here, let's just make this whole thing an href. And then we'll put the link there. We'll save that. And then I'm going to change this back to a paragraph. Uh, Sorry, to a span. All right, so I was messing around a little bit there. Got back to kind of where we were at and uh, just wanted to try a few things without having to make you watch all of it. But basically uh, where we were, we had the, the paragraph with the style that we kind of had, had built there. The font has 24 pixels, kind of making this whole thing, but I want to make this whole thing clickable. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change this paragraph to a div. And you can see that that actually broke my spacing there a little bit. So let's make this padding a little bit bigger. And let's try six, maybe seven. Yeah. So I think that looks pretty good. And so that whole div now is going to be what I want to actually click on. So I want to take this ahref and I want to, instead of having the href inside of there, I want to have it outside. So let's first make a span here with a font. And inside of that span, let's just put that uh, schedule a call text. And then let's take the A from the href and wrap the outside of the div. And then we'll take this, we'll wrap the front side of the div. And now what you see is I have the entire div with that schedule of call text in there. Looks pretty centered, but now if I click over here, I'm still getting my entire thing is clickable. So even though, even though it doesn't have the whole underline over here this gives the user a lot better chance to go ahead and click on things so you can see uh, that would gives that uh, just a lot easier chance to click on things so once again i'm just going to go ahead and get add my changes and probably just uh, get status quick just to see make sure yeah i'm just modified index.html so we'll go ahead and get commit added calendly link and go ahead and push that out. And then we'll wait just a minute or so and hit the GitHub pages again. All right, so there's my site. And uh, let's see if we got, there's our schedule of call. It's a little probably bigger than I really want, but that's okay. Uh, you can play around with that on yours to, to kind of make sure everything looks good. And uh, it is spanning the entire thing. So go ahead and click on that and you can see that now that's wired up. 
someone could come out here and could actually schedule a chat with me and give me the information that I need to contact them and schedule it. And so, you know, just demo person. And let's just do demo example.com, which is not going to ever send an email. And you could add guests and, you know, help me, please. Help me, Obi-Wan. My only hope. So you can see they can go ahead and schedule that event. So there it is. And now demo at example.com should probably get an email, which example.com doesn't actually send emails as far as I know, so that should be good. All right, but please don't schedule with Boba Fett. He will not respond to you, but you can see how easily you could do that on your site. And that's going to wrap up this video. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Hello and welcome to our next video. In this video, we're going to pretty much wrap up our look at working with our pages. And we're going to talk about some more advanced things that you could do to your page. Now this is a single page, it's static, but that doesn't mean you can't run JavaScript. You can do all kinds of things with JavaScript. You can also modify the CSS to make things look nicer as well. And so you can play around with that as you get better with some of this stuff. If you're really good at it already, you're probably already knocking it out of the park, right? So what I wanted to do is just quickly show you how I could integrate some of my own JavaScript to do more stuff if I wanted to. Now keep in mind that this is a very simple example and it's not complete, but it does give you kind of an idea of how to get started. So here what we have, this is our contact form, which I currently have disabled just because I don't want people clicking on it and you know trying to think they're sending me information and getting errors or whatever and being complaining about it. Now. I'm going to undisable that just by removing this disabled attribute. And you can see now the button is available again. And if I click on it there, it actually has some built-in validation, which is kind of nice. Um, but what's important to me right now is this actually over here, I have, you know, the send message disabled button, but I have this ID called send message button. So if I look at my scripts right now, my JavaScript, let's bring this over here. So right now, if I have the send much message button, I have this JavaScript, which is already being loaded by the page. If I scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can see that scripts.js is loaded on the page here at the very bottom from that place. So I could drop more scripts in here if I want to run my own JavaScript outside of this file, or I can put my code right in this file. I just need to know where to put it. It is using jQuery, which is really easy. So you can see it's already referencing the jQuery to do things like the scrolling up and down on the page. So if I make a mistake here, I could actually break my scrolling and that would, I would know I broke something. But let's say right here, I just want to add something quickly to, um, you know, submit the form. Now I'm not going to actually be able to do this, but what I want to do is I want to show how I could possibly make this happen. So if I go back to where that submit button was, that send message button, you see, let's see. Okay, so there is send message button. And so you see that's there. Up here you also see that I have all these form uh, input forms. And so I have text and email and telephone. And so I can grab that information just by using the same ID attribute with JavaScript jQuery. So I'm just getting the value of whatever they put into the email text here. And I'm just gonna alert that out. Now this is not, not ideal. It's not the best way to do things, but you can see that on click of the send message button, I'm gonna run a function which is gonna grab the email. You could do more, you get the, um, the text as well. So it's a name is equal to, and then it's just the ID here, which is name with a hash, hashtag for ID dot for 
classes. So if I wanted to use a, anything that's in the form control class, I could do dot form dash control, but that does get all of them, which gets a little more messy uh, if I want specific details. So here again, I'm just gonna hit the val, uh, and then I can add that in as well. So it's, it's very easy to grab this information from the user. And then you could post this. You know, one idea I had was write an Azure function that limits the actual access of my code to the IP from GitHub pages so that people can't just randomly call my Azure function. But what I could do then is make it so that only that specific IP can get through. And then I could actually collect email information if I wanted to. Now I'm not gonna go to that level, but this is a talk in this video about some of the advanced things I thought about, even if we're not gonna implement them. You could, you could do that if you wanted to go to that level. All right, so let's run this and see what it looks like now. So I'm gonna actually do this uh, by going out and getting the page. Just gonna open this in the file explorer and I'm gonna bring the page open. And then anytime I have new JavaScript, sometimes I'll just hit a control F5 just to kind of refresh, make sure I have the latest version. And so down here, let's go ahead and put a name in, uh, Boba. And let's go ahead and send. You see your name is Boba and your email is Boba Fett. So you see that it did grab that information just like what expected and alerted it. So I have full power over the page as far as JavaScript goes, which means that I can, gra I can grab information from the user and I can post that to any third party API just with an HTTP request or a put or whatever, uh, whatever I would need to do. Very simply posting that information here, like Ajax post. So dollar sign, what is it, dollar sign Ajax? It's been a while since I've done this. Yeah, anyway. Um, if you wanted to see more about that, it's a really easy find. Just uh, Ajax post jQuery. And you can see how, you know, there's all kinds of examples on how you could do that. Here it is, dot Ajax. And then you just, whatever URL your third party API is or your personal API is, the data you want to pass, which would be your username, email, kind of in a Java, uh, in a JSON string. And then, you know, just pass it on. So very easy to do that. So that's one thing you could do. Uh, just a quick look around the site, just really quickly. I've done a couple other things here. I've added my LinkedIn as a link. You click this button, it, it brings you to LinkedIn to connect with me if you want to do that. Um, there's different information about, you know, this is just uh, random stuff, but you can see, you know, I've been able to do uh, other things on these different things. This is the book that I wrote. Um, brings you out to the site where I wrote the book. So you can look at that and uh, and see all that information. There's that call we just did. Here's, you know, if you want to listen to my stuff on Spotify right here in the embedded, otherwise a link to it. Um, yeah, so just there's down here, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, all that jazz. Um, you can look at that and, and use those as, as examples on how you would be able to add your contact information to your own page so other people would be able to get in contact with you. So we talked a little bit about JavaScript. We didn't talk a lot about CSS, so I want to just touch on that quick. So in here we have a styles.css and if you're not familiar with CSS, it's a little bit different and it's a, a little bit of a learning curve. Um, it's a very powerful language to, you can use to style your pages. So what we saw was that a lot, a lot of the stuff was kind of defaulted to some colors and different, different things that were happening. These are all different HTML or different ID tags that I can reference and look at and see what's going on. And you can see like anytime I have a button, um, it should have a, whatever this webcat appearance, webcat appearance for button is. Uh, and you can see all this other stuff that's going on. Here's a, you know, input radio checkbox. Um, it's going to add padding, no padding. It's going to be in the border box. So just a lot of different stuff here. This is how you can quickly style your page to make things look differently. And this is quite, and this one came with quite a lot of classes, but you can also write your own class. So to write a class, you just dot, and then the name of your class, so just do demo class. And then let's just say we want to do a background color. And then let's just, you know, look, they got us some nice examples here. Let's do something really bright so it's easy to see. Uh, how about this aqua color? Now, I personally don't like a named color like that. I would much rather just try to find it. So let's see. No, how about this one seven a two b eight? I don't. It, and then maybe we want to do color for the text uh, as red or something. So that'd be zero zero f f zero zero. Has anybody got me? 
sorry, it's FF0000. We don't want, we don't want full red. So let's let's get more of a this is going to be really really ugly with that, but whatever. Uh, so demo class. And so now what I can do is any background color there is going to be that weird kind of aqua color and then the color here for the text is going to be kind of a pink. So it may not even be readable, honestly. Uh, but then I could just come and quickly add something to the page. Uh, let's just do the footer. So here down here we have all this copyright information, all that jazz. Let's just, uh, for a for temporary purpose, let's just put the class on here. Uh, it has row, align, center, and let's just do demo class. And let's see what that looks like. So you see it changed the, the bottom to that background color with that light pink kind of text color, which I honestly don't want, but you see how easy it is that you can go in there and start messing around with CSS to make your changes to, to look the way that you would like them to look. So there's a couple of advanced things you can do. You can work with the JavaScript, you can work with the CSS to, to do things. Now, if you're very savvy and you're familiar with React or Angular or Vue, and you understand that when you publish a React or an Angular or Vue page, it's really just a JavaScript static page that makes a lot of calls, you might actually consider possibly doing things with that here. Now, just remember that if you do go to that route, again, you're going to be starting to figure out how you're going to integrate with your own data through an API and keep that secure because you're going to be posting all of your links in a public repo. So it's not something I would super recommend to do, um, but you could you could certainly find ways to do that. And And people who are more advanced with GitHub pages might actually know ways to obscure that a little bit or obfuscate it so that you wouldn't actually expose your public endpoints to the web. But at some point, someone has to make the call. It's likely sniffable or traceable. Um, maybe this is a little more information than you want to know. But again, we we're talking about some of the more advanced things that you could consider doing. So I wanted to throw it out there. But really, at this point, you should have all the tools you need, other than if you don't know HTML or JavaScript or CSS, you might need to learn some of that stuff. But you should have all the tools you need at this point to start making your own GitHub page and be able to put your own brand information out there, put YouTube videos on it, link people to your Calendly or whatever, um, you know, point them to your LinkedIn, your Facebooks, whatever you want to do, uh, your Twitter accounts, and uh, hopefully that will get you started. And I'd love to hear and see from you, you know, what you've been working on. Thanks very much. We'll see you next time. Hello everybody, welcome to our final video for the course, at least the final official video that I'm going to create. I may create more modules in the future depending on questions that come in, but this is officially going to be the last video I'm recording before I push the button to launch this course and give it to you. Now it's been a blast for me to put this course together for you and I hope that you've enjoyed it as well. I want to tell you a little story about why I did this. So just a couple weeks ago I put out a tweet about how a certain provider was having a bad day. I had a site hosted for them, actually it was Major Guidance Solutions, and that's the company that I've kind of been working under the shell of, of my own company for the last, what, 12 years now? Anyway, uh, their databases just weren't working, and quite frankly, I thought about it for a while and I realized I don't even need the database, nor do I need to pay a hosting provider anymore for a site that is essentially static with not a lot of changes, so I thought, why not move to GitHub pages? And at the same time, I thought, well, this is a great opportunity for me to share this knowledge with all of you. Because I think there's other people like me who now want to have these sites, but don't necessarily want to 
fork over the money or manage a database or even need to. And this is the solution for you. So I thought, why not build this course and show it? So of course you know about GitHub Pages Demo, the one that we've been doing throughout. And I would love it if you check this out at some point. Connect with me on LinkedIn, connect with me on Twitter, check out the links on the pages here. I would love it if you'd listen to my music at Spotify. That would help me out a lot. Connect with me on Twitter or LinkedIn or different sites are linked here. I'd love to connect with you. But I thought as we close this video, uh, I wanted to show a couple of other examples of GitHub pages that are out there that other people have done. So I, I posted a tweet and I didn't get as many responses as I would have hoped for. But I got a couple, so I'm going to show those. And then I also want to show you a couple things that might surprise you as to who else might be using GitHub pages without you even really realizing it. And a couple other things that you could do throughout the time. So again, I told you about Major Guidance Solutions. That was my database site. So here I've ported it over to GitHub pages now. So this is no longer on a database. It's all done statically at GitHub pages. And basically everything done here is just an HTML page. That's actually a link to a different page. And so, uh, but custom development, courses, portfolio, about, all this stuff is basically done through GitHub Pages, and you can find that information and, and take a look at it uh, if you want to. I put the AppSumo control on here. It's just a JavaScript control, which would allow me to collect an email if somebody wants to join my newsletter. Also to share on social media. So AppSumo is free, uh, and then you can check that out at any point to, uh, if you want to add that to your sites. Now. I also did a sci-fi dev con last year. Now, I never got to actually host this conference. I'm really bummed about that because I'd love to have this conference. Um, and we put this together last year, but uh, things just didn't work out with ticket sales and uh, took a bad approach to it. So I learned a lot, but unfortunately never got to hold the, the event. But you can see this is also an awesome GitHub Pages site done with some stuff here. You can see you know, a lot of my friends uh, that I know throughout the tech industry were going to present, and I'm really bummed that we didn't get to have this conference. Um, and I wish I could do it. And maybe maybe we'll figure out a way to do this yet. But um, so don't don't worry about this. But I wanted you to just see like I was able to get a template that was available. I was able to make a logo at Fiverr for for literally a few dollars, and uh, you know bought, bought some images off of I can't remember Shutterfly or one of the stock places. I can't remember what it was uh, that made these nice little sci-fi images. And my friend put together all these little speaker cards, which was awesome. Anyway. Um, you can do all this stuff at GitHub Pages. I have another friend, his name is Joseph Godagno, and he is awesome uh, in the developer community. And he actually works for Quicken Loans as the director uh, there in the developer services. Um, and so, you know, he, he's running Desert Code Camp as well, but he actually said, go ahead and show his site, which is awesome because, uh, you know, this is just a great way to see, you know, different ways that you can use GitHub Pages. You can see he's got all of the stuff. He's got it categorized. You can do lots of different searching, um, you know, different things that he's done uh, by posts, all these different blog posts, um, and of course, all that contact information. So you can check him out on Twitter. You can check him out uh, as he streams, um, you know, on Twitch uh, when he's doing his coding with Joe. And so, you know, just really cool stuff. Um, I'm actually now kind of a an honorary board member for the Midwest Azure user group here. And so um, my friend Duane, who I work with, has uh, graciously allowed me to become part of his team uh, on this. And it's really been a great experience. But again, we're, we're here hosting this site at github.io. And one of my jobs uh, is actually to up update this site. So if you have any ideas, I'd love to hear them. And then I wanted to show you this one. So I forked this from a guy named Only Way, And uh, it's called Explain Get with D3. So this is a GitHub page, but check this out. I can go into Zen mode and I can literally practice Git. So I can say git commit, git commit, git checkout master or first commit or whatever. Um, I should have branched right away. So let's just do check out a branch here and then git commit, git commit. And you can even see things like rebasing. So uh, git checkout Brian2, git rebase master. So you can see how that works. So this is a GitHub page using D3, which is a really powerful JavaScript library. But you see, these, this is the kind of thing you can do. So 
lots of cool stuff, even through sites I've built or sites other people have built that I've forked and, uh, you know, other things that are going on there. So really cool stuff. But okay, so that didn't sell you on GitHub pages. All right, well, let's talk about who's actually using GitHub pages then other than me and my friends. All right, how about Twitter Bootstrap? How about Jekyll? How about government.github? How about Electron? How about Square, Twitter, Netflix, Yelp, React from Facebook, and Artsy? These are all GitHub pages examples. And if you don't believe me, you can go to github.com collections, GitHub pages examples, and you can see exactly who is already using GitHub pages. Get Bootstrap, Jekyll, Electron, Square, Twitter open source. Netflix open source, Yelp open source, Facebook React, and Artsy Engineering. All of these people are also using GitHub pages. So hopefully with all of those examples out there, all the stuff that you've seen that I've done throughout this course, all the stuff that maybe you already know how to do yourself and other people have done, you can take all of this and put it together and build yourself an awesome GitHub Pages site. Now, I'm really looking forward to hearing about your journey. So I would love it if you would reach out to me, either through a message or through Twitter or through LinkedIn or whatever mode suits you, uh, if you want to contact me and just let me know what your URL is for the page that you built. I would love to see that. And maybe even I'll tweet it out if you want me to, uh, to say, hey, one of my students or one of the people that you know, took my course, maybe not necessarily my student, but a colleague uh, who took the course and, and learned from me um, or learned enough to do their own thing or whatever you're doing uh, has completed. And this is the link. So I would love to share that with the world too. Um, but yeah, so unfortunately that's going to wrap things up. That's the end of our time, but I've really, again, appreciated all of the time that you've given me. Thank you for being a part of, of this course. Thank you for letting me be a part of your journey and all the best to you in the future.